One of my favorite parts about the NFL Draft each and every year is the ridiculous and crazy stories we get. Players from all walks of life end up getting a chance to walk across the stage, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about probably one of the most fascinating players, and a guy who has probably the most insane story in this year's draft. He was a guy from a small town of less than a thousand people that literally did not have one Division I offer. He chose to walk on as a scrawny tight end, but somehow ended up becoming one of the top offensive linemen in all of college football, and has one of the most likable and crazy personalities of any football player. Today we're going to be talking about Cody Mock. He's someone who's currently projected to go late in the first round, or consensusly in the second round, as he's one of the top offensive lineman prospects in this year. And we're going to go through how he went from a walk-on tight end to a 6'6 Viking-looking lineman from North Dakota State. I think today's video is going to be pretty fun, but before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you want to support what I'm doing here, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player topic team or situation I can cover next. Now let's get started and talk about the insane rise of Cody Ma. So right now, out of all the stories I've researched, he has by far the craziest journey. How on earth did this bizarre transformation happen? Let's go back in time. Cody has the most recognizable smile in this year's NFL Draft, and that is where his story starts. You can thank his middle school friend for that. He is responsible for what now might become the most recognizable gap tooth grin in the NFL. Cody hasn't had his two front teeth since he was in middle school, and he lost them when he was chasing a loose ball in a middle school basketball game. After several trips to the dentist in the ER, Mock decided that he would not repair his teeth until he finished playing football. The guy was missing his two front teeth, but he didn't really seem to care. His mother, though, was kind of worried. She was a school teacher and knew how other kids would probably look at him. She said, quote, You just want your kids to grow up confident and happy. If you get your teeth fixed, you'll be confident and ready to smile and take on the world. But this guy doesn't even need his teeth to do that. He's shown that over and over again, the way he flashes the smile and the confidence that he has. I guess since Cody's mouth was still growing, the plan called for him to wait for implants. He went through several sets of braces to widen his mouth, and even used a retainer and a flipper with false teeth. Except, all that stuff kept breaking, and eventually, Mock stopped caring, and he said it kind of went along with his goofy personality. For a little more information on him, he is the second of eight children, spanning 25 years old to 7 years old. He comes from a large family that goes back generations around the town of Hankinson, North Dakota. The town has 922 people, is located an hour away from Fargo, and is in the southeast corner of the state. As a boy, he would spend his summer days at the family farm, and that's where he said he learned how to work. His parents said, quote, Our kids have been working on the farm since they were eight years old, and this would end up becoming Cody's identity. It really helped him when he got to Hankinson High School, as he competed in every sport they offered. They had nine-man football, basketball, baseball, and track, as he was an all-region player in both basketball and track, and set school records on the football field. Having a competitive sports family surely helped. He said, quote, whatever was going on in the sports world, that was what was going on in our front yard. If it was a football season, they would mow a football field out there. If it was baseball season, they would mow a baseball field. His high school was nicknamed the Pirates, and as a Pirate, he finished his career with 1,072 receiving yards, a school record 24 touchdowns, and also the school record for sacks in a season and career. On the basketball court, he was an all-conference player who averaged nearly 15 points a game, and was also even an all-regional player. In track and field, he qualified for the state as a thrower. Cody truly epitomized that small town all around athlete who was probably the most recognizable and most likable kid in his high school. Unfortunately, though, not a lot of schools recruited that area, so he didn't have a whole lot of interest. He had a few offers from some Division II programs, but Cody thought he could do better and play at a much higher level. Eventually, the local FCS powerhouse gave Cody a chance to be a preferred walk on, and he jumped on it. He said, quote, yeah, I was really excited. I immediately knew I wanted to come there, and I've been following NDSU football my whole life, and I know it's a big deal to get an opportunity to play there. He ended up choosing that preferred walk-on offer from North Dakota State instead of the other school that offered him, North Dakota. He was going to roll with the Bison, and he said his goals were to one day make some sort of impact on the field and win national titles. Little did he know, he would end up doing both. According to 24-7 Sports, Mock was as low as it possibly can get. He was a zero-star recruit and didn't even have a picture on the platform. His odds of ever playing were extremely slim, and his odds of the NFL were as close to zero as it mathematically gets. But someday, his pipe dream would actually become a reality after a crazy transformation. As I said, Mock ended up walking on at North Dakota State, 
after receiving mostly D2 offers. And on the first day, former NDSU offensive lineman Nash Jensen said, quote, who's this scrawny little redhead? During a practice in the spring of 2018, North Dakota State head coach Chris Kleiman called over Jim Craner, the team's longtime strength coach. Coach Kleiman gestured towards Mock, who had just registered the previous year, and said, quote, that kid's going to be a big kid. Kleiman is now obviously the head man at Kansas State and has done a tremendous job with player development there. But it started at NDSU and with him seeing things that not even his own players could see. Cody said, quote, he was the first person who ever told me I might have a shot at the NFL. That was before I really even started playing offensive line, and I'm like, man, this guy's crazy. How's he know? Mock would spend the next few months in the weight room and in the dining halls and at all the other eateries around campus. North Dakota State apparently has an all-you-can-eat program for freshmen, and quote, Cody took full advantage, according to one of the coaches. He said, honestly, I was just eating. I had to go buy an unlimited plan at the dining center, and we had to get 15 meals a week. I was probably eating 26 to 27 meals a week. I was always just there eating every day. Since he wasn't actually playing on the field and was more of a low-risk player, they could take a more aggressive approach with him and ended up paying off. In 2018, when NDSU kicked off, he was now at 269 pounds, which was a 35-pound increase from his 2017 weight. By the fall of 2019, he was up to 290, which was 21 more pounds since that year. Another thing that people notice about Cody is his long hair. This apparently started as a freshman, as their director of football operations told him to grow his hair out. I guess Cody went with the flow, and he said, quote, Eh, I'll just do it. Why not? I've been growing it out for probably four years now, and I saved a lot of money on haircut. Cody also ended up getting a little bit of luck, as he would grow to six foot six, and combine that without working everybody else, he found himself on the field, and he became a star for the Bison. After the 2021 season, Mock probably could have been drafted, but he decided to come back, get a little bit better, and generate more buzz around his name. He also generated plenty of buzz with his personality. At NDSU, he became known for his creative first down celebrations, having in-game conversations with opposing linemen, and even playing the air fiddle. This garnered him a special nickname, which they called Tud, and his friend said, quote, When you think of a guy with the nickname of Tud, that's Cody. No front teeth, a big smile, and long flowing red hair. Personally, my favorite part about Cody was the fact that he'd become friends with opposing linemen. One of the SU coach said, quote, Cody's out here kicking these guys around and then talking to them about their uncle and farming. I think we were playing Northern Iowa, and he was talking about egg science with their defensive tackle. We get home, and he would tell me about how he was talking to another player about a new tractor. Obviously, NDSU is an FCS dynasty, but they finally lost this year to South Dakota State in Frisco, Texas, and now his six-year career ended up being over. While he was on campus, he won a lot of games and played a lot of snaps, just like he said he would. He won FCS titles in 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2021, and he got to win a lot of games. He went from an All-Missouri Valley Conference player to then an All-American in 2021. He did that once again this year, where he became the best FCS offensive lineman, winning multiple awards, and was the highest graded tackle on Pro Football Focus with a score of 90.8. Since 2014, North Dakota State has had 10 players drafted, including two first-round picks in Trey Lance and Carson Wentz. They've also had four offensive linemen, and there's a really interesting trend with all of them. Somehow, they're all super under-recruited kids that somehow get to the NFL. Joe Haig went from a walk-on to a 2016 fifth-round pick. Cordell Vorson went from playing nine-man football to a fourth-round pick by the Bengals. And then, his older brother signed as an undrafted free agent with the Chargers. And another guy by the name of Landon Leckler played nine-man football and went to the Bengals as an undrafted free agent in 2017. Locke will end up being the best story of all of them, and scouts think he can make a real impact at the next level. They love his footwork and his ability to move as his greatest asset, and one scout thinks that his blocking scheme will make him a vertical monster where he can pull and run down the field. While the biggest critique about him is that he doesn't have the longest arms, he has demonstrated the ability to play anywhere on the offensive line, and he dominated the senior bowl. One scout said, quote, he's the only guy in this draft class who has proven he can play all five spots. Those guys are really hard to find. In the Senior Bowl game, he played left guard, center, and right tackle, so he's proven he can play on both sides, which is big. As I said, that arm length is something that could potentially hold him back, and there are some people who wonder about how good his competition was, but those are really his only two flaws that I see at this time. And either way, he'll hear his name called in those first two nights, and maybe even on the first night. He says a lot of his family and friends will be celebrating in his small town, and the whole town has rallied around this kid, 
And as I've said, I think he has the best story in this year's draft so far. According to NFL Mock Database, he's currently ranked as the 54th overall prospect, best ranked coming in at 48th, and his first round percentage at 13%. It looks like he's going to be your stereotypical day two player. We'll probably start right away, and hopefully everyone will know his name, and people will probably know his name whether he's good or not. Missing those two teeth and having that long, messy hair is going to make him one of the most recognizable and likable players in the NFL, and I'm really excited to see what he does. He has a great story, and this is just another great player that the Bison have produced. But what do you guys think? If you're a North Dakota State fan, what do you think of Cody Mock? How do you think he's going to do in the NFL? And what's another story I can take a look at next? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.